On April 11, 1970, the NASA mission Apollo 13 was launched. 25 years later, the film Apollo 13 was released, depicting in great detail the catastrophe that took place on that mission, as well as the events leading up to it. Unlike most historical events, where accounts come after the fact, thanks to NASA's meticulous record-keeping, we know exactly what happened during the mission. So with that in mind, the filmmakers had the ability to make the movie completely accurate. Did they? How accurate is Apollo 13? As we mentioned, NASA has complete transcripts of the mission available to the public, and we'll put a link to them down below in the description if you'd like to read them yourself. Now, we're not going to go through the transcript and the movie script line by line and point out wherever there's a deviation. Seeing as everything was recorded, we could technically go over it for days. And since the film is technically based on the book Lost Moon by astronaut Jim Lovell, much of the movie outside of the mission and NASA is about his family and personal relationships. So we're not going to focus so much on that aspect. The first thing that we will talk about is a detail that runs throughout the movie, is the dates and time. Whenever you see a time or a location on screen, it is completely accurate. Starting with, on October 30th, 1969, Jim Lovell was informed that due to an unexpected decision by management to ground Alan Shepard's crew, Lovell's crew was being moved up to Apollo 13. However, on April 11th, 1970, three days before the launch of the mission, at the insistence of the flight surgeon, Command Module Pilot Ken Mattingly was grounded due to the possibility that he could have contracted the measles. He was then replaced by backup pilot Jack Swagger. Which brings us to our first real deviation from history. In the film, both Lovell and Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes, as well as others, show concern in Swaggart's ability to pilot the module. However, all persons involved say that no one was actually worried about Swaggart's piloting the module. It is possible that nobody wanted to admit that there was such a concern, but we do know it was the writer's decision to add the subplot, and it does come up again later in the film. Prior to the launch, during the introduction of flight director Gene Kranz, he receives a package revealed to be a mission vest made by his wife. Although many people believe this to be a gimmick just for the movie, this was a real tradition for him whenever he served as a flight director. And his Apollo 13 vest is on display at the Smithsonian. Once the astronauts are seated inside the spacecraft, the transcripts begin, and the dialogue from inside the ship and mission control hardly deviates aside from the passage of time between scenes. In fact, the film's most famous line was one of those few inaccuracies, albeit a minor one. 55 hours, 53 minutes, 12 seconds into the mission, the module's number two oxygen tank suffered an explosion, which in the film led to the famous line, Houston, we have a problem. But it was actually misquoted from the real, Houston, we've had a problem. Even though this is such a small nitpick, Seeing as you can literally follow along word for word with the transcripts down to the second for the rest of the scene, we felt it bears mentioning. Following the explosion, we have a recurrence of a previous inaccuracy where Hayes and Swagger get into an argument about what caused the problem. According to both the transcripts and those involved, no one blamed Swagger or any individual for that matter for the explosion and certainly not during the mission. One of the reasons the Apollo 13 disaster is remembered so well is that it exemplified NASA's efficiency under pressure, and by all accounts, the three astronauts maintained their composure throughout the ordeal. On the ground, we have less information on what everybody was doing, but we do know the important things. Starting with the other famous line from the movie, Failure is not an option. is not a real quote, but was paraphrased by the writers from an interview with Flight Dynamics Officer Technician Jerry Bostick, where he described the team's mentality. Another thing made clear in the film was the various technicians being assigned to specific teams, but according to those involved, most people were moving around between different tasks as needed. For instance, in the film, Mattingly is called in to only work on the modular power-up sequence. However, he says he worked on many different projects at the time. Speaking of the modular power-up sequence, brings us to another point downplayed in the film, is NASA's preparedness for anything. In the film, Mattingly and others come up with the power-up sequence from scratch, but NASA actually had several backup plans that just needed to be tested for effectiveness, not invented at the last minute. Similarly, the problem with the CO2 filtration was also cobbled together on the spot, when all they actually had to do was look up the previously developed solution from a simulation of the exact same problem a few months prior. In the closing moments of the mission, the intensity of the scene is elevated by the narration of Walter Cronkite. While Cronkite did cover many events of the Apollo 13 mission, Multiple different sound clips were selected and combined for dramatic effect, and he even re-recorded some of it himself to improve their quality. 
As the three astronauts step on board the USS Iwo Jima, narration covers the future of several of the key characters, all of which is accurate. As you might be able to tell from the shorter than usual length of this video, this movie is incredibly accurate compared to most. In the end, Apollo 13 presents a very rare chance to have almost complete accuracy in a big budget movie, but the writers and director chose dramatic storytelling instead of it. But do you think they should have? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't, please consider subscribing. And thank you to the new wave of subscribers from Cynical Historian. If you guys haven't, you should check his channel out. He's got some good content. Thanks for watching.